There's only one other thing that'll take a charro bean recipe to another level once you get it into the bowl, and that's a big old scoop of Spanish rice. Now, is it Spanish rice? Is it Mexican rice? You can call it whatever you want, but this is the rice that my mama makes at home every time we make rice. It's the same one we use in catering. Everybody always loves my mother's rice. Woohoo, this is good. Here you go, mom. Oh, yeah. Let's see who finishes first. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> All right, mom, let's make some rice. Let's start it. So we're gonna be cooking the rice on one of my mom's very old Dutch ovens. It's her favorite thing to make rice on and a few mom's. other grease. So it was grandma's. Yes, that Dutch was oven my was, mom's. <laughs> I didn't remember that, but that was my grandma's Dutch oven. So it's been in the family a very long time. I start with a tablespoon of oil and three quarter cup of rice, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, a pinch of uh, oregano. Not everybody uses oregano, but I like the way that tastes. And I use a half a teaspoon of cominos. Also, I use one tablespoon of chicken bouillon. It's a chicken bouillon. This brand is the Maggie brand. I also use a teaspoon of salt. You, you might add some more according to your taste. You may need some more or less, but that's what I use. And before I put all the spices in there, I usually like to put the tomato sauce in there, a third of a cup. And I'll put that in, give it a little stir so you can kind of saute a little bit. And that, to me, that gives it a good flavor also. After we do all that, I pour in two cups of uh, chicken broth. Also, the broth is made out of chicken bones, of all the chickens that Arnie buys all the time. I like to keep them at the necks, and then I boil them and save the broth for cooking, pasta or anything, the rice, anything that we can put it in. You can put water, but you're supposed to warm it up first before you put it in the rice. You don't want to put the water cold in there because that kind of makes the rice a little bit mushy. But the first thing that I need to do before we put all of this in there is brown the rice. All right, so first we're gonna add that tablespoon of oil. Spread it around and mom already has the pan a little bit warmed up. We're gonna dump the rice in there, start spreading it around. Also, once you get everything in there, your, your water, which will be the last thing. Once it starts boiling, you cover it up and do not open it for at least 10 minutes. And you don't stir it at all, so it won't come out mushy. Just try it and see if it's cooked or not. If you need to cook it some more, cover it back again. Don't stir it. So the trick to nice fluffy rice is to put the lid on it and leave it on Forget at least 10 it. minutes. Like, at least 10 minutes because you gotta check and see if the water evaporated too quick or what you know this is like you have to check but don't stir you can see where the oil is starting to come to the rice and it's starting to get a little bit brown so we continue stirring it so we can kind of brown evenly so you can see what it takes to get it like that to get it into that nice beautiful golden color it's starting to look really pretty and i can smell the it toasty smells rice, it smells good. really good. Mm -hmm. it smells great. You can smell it all the way outside. <laughs> <laughs> now this is a big, heavy cast iron pan. It, it tends to cook the rice a little bit quicker. Thank when you. cast iron gets hot, it gets hot and stays hot a long time. So you can cook with a little bit less heat. See how beautiful it looks? Yeah, it looks really nice, mama. All right, so here comes the tomato sauce. Yeah, here comes the tomato sauce, watch the steam. Look at it go. Now we got some steam going on there. I, I had already put all the spices together so I could just put everything at the same time. Okay, so we got all our spices and the Maggie consomme in there together at the same time. She's gonna let those kind of toast a little bit with the heat before adding the chicken broth. Yes, here we go, not too much, so. Sure looks nice. That's a pretty color on the broth already. I'm gonna put a little bit more water in there because I think that two cups was not enough. So oh, okay. I put in like maybe half a cup. I'm not gonna do the whole cup. So like all cooking, uh, you know, it's kind of a learned experience. You have to kind of watch what you're doing, eyeball it, and pay attention, of course. 
do whatever you need to do. If it needs more water, you add more water. And that's what okay. we just did. That's all the stirring I'm going to do for now. I'm going to put the lid on, cover it, and let it cook for a few minutes. I'm going to get the heat lower because we don't want it to start over boiling, to simmering. There we go. What are we doing next, Mom? Wait for it to cook and we can eat. To me, sometimes it takes longer to brown the rice than to cook it. <laughs> uh, you need to be very careful not to burn it, but at the same time, you want it with a nice color of brown. Watch out that it doesn't dry up and mm. don't cook it too long. You're supposed to cook it like 15 minutes and that okay. depending also on the pan because if it's a thick, heavy pan like the one I'm gonna use, it's, which is cast iron, um, it can cook quick. If you use a, a thin pan, it might take a little longer because the water will dry up faster. Grandma's rice is cooking. She's going to check it. It's been right at about 10 minutes. Okay. Whoo, man. Guys and gals, if you could okay. smell this. Whoo, look at that rice. I'm going to turn it off already because I think it's cooked. Okay. It's cooked. So mom says she's going to turn it off already. And uh, that extra carryover heat from the pan is going to finish cooking the rice. Okay, I'm gonna take the lid off. I wanna check on this rice and make sure that it's okay. Look at that, it's so pretty. Beautiful rice. And see how fluffy it is? Not sticky. Not sticky at all. That's the way you want your rice. Uh -huh. Not sticky, but nice and now fluffy. I, now you can stir it. <laughs> all right, okay, cool. Okay. Look how pretty that looks. Perfect. It's really nice looking rice. Tastes good. All right, now this rice really only took about 15 minutes total to cook. Normally, today was a little bit less because we used this heavy Dutch oven. And uh, once it got hot, you know, we even turned it off and let it finish cooking with just the carryover heat. Uh, if you use a lighter pan, you can use that too. Just going to take another two or three, maybe four minutes longer to cook. But it's so easy to make and it doesn't take any time at all. Total cooking time from start to finish. Total time to make rice like this between start and finish is maybe 25 or 30 minutes. So guys, if you like the rice, go ahead and hit the like button. Remember to ring the bell too so you don't miss any notifications. And uh, if you want to up your barbecue game, go to pitmasterclass.us. If you want to buy my two rubs, go to pitmaster.us. Guys, thanks for watching. Remember to keep the smoke light and wow! Many years ago, we used to cater a lot. And so mom would always make the rice for us. Uh, one of the things about using powders is that it's a lot easier to be yes. consistent with your recipe on a week to week basis or each time you make it basis because it's an actual measurement. Whereas, you know, sometimes this onion, that onion, the other onion, and, you know, unless you're pressing it down and measuring it, it's gonna be a little bit harder to be exactly consistent every single time. But when you use powders and, and stuff like this, it's very easy to be consistent on your recipe time after time after time again. So that's the other reason we started using powder years ago, and it's always been fantastic.